so here we have a scene that I have made. Um, I've just taken the base, basic and vector melee uh, combat scene that, that comes with it, and I've copied that down into my scenes directory. And I have also made uh, another scene called Travel to Scene. So something new that uh, has been added here is, as you can see in the network manager, there's something called database and sync scenes as well as display debug window. So these things are new with uh, the, the scene manager update. And the database is uh, basically a database of all the scenes and then all the entry points within those scenes. So I'll explain a little bit more about what those are. But let's say we have this scene and we want to travel to the scene called travel to scene. Um, and we need to do that in a way that it's going to work with uh, multiplayer. Now I can do it in, in two ways. If I say sync scenes here, that means everybody is always going to uh, travel together. So anyone inside of this room will travel with the person that is leaving this room. So everybody travels together that way. And if you're going to do this, I would just make sure that every uh, scene that you set up, everybody travels together. Uh, otherwise, that's just going to cause issues. And then I would also make sure that if this is ticked, make sure that you lock down your room so it's unjoinable uh, after you leave the lobby. Um, so for now, let's make things interesting and let's uncheck this. So that means people can travel to and from rooms separately. So let's go ahead and first set up a scene exit point. So something new is uh, scene transition manager. And there's something called update scenes database, view scenes database, and then we can add a scene exit and a scene entrance. So first of all, let's view our scene database and you'll see that there is nothing in here. This is completely blank. So let's set up our initial blank database and say update scenes database. Wait for this to be done. Okay, it says it's done. And then let's go ahead and say view scenes database. So here it picked up both of our scenes that are in our build settings here at uh, index zero and index one as seen here. And then there's no entrance points in those scenes. So let's go ahead and set this up further. Let's add that scene exit. And let's position that where we want it to be. Okay. Um, and you'll know here, you notice here in the scene exit, we can say what scene we want to load. So I definitely want to do the travel to scene, but you'll see that there's no spawn points here. And uh, that's because we have not set up any um, scene entrance points for this scene or this scene. So let's first uh, set up um, a scene entrance. Okay. And let's set that up in front of the red door here. And then let's set up another scene entrance, say like the top of the tower here. So now that we have our scene entrances set up, one thing that we got to realize is that they're all named the same thing and that's bad. We all, we want unique names for everything here. So let's go ahead and run a test. And we will see that. Uh, we will see here, it says, hey, the network manager doesn't have a database set up, which we have just um, created a blank one. And then also here it says, hey, these points are named the same thing as another point. Um, and so let's see what happens. So let's go here to scene exit here. And you'll notice nothing is showing up still. And that is because we have not updated our scene database. So let's update our scene database. Okay, and here our scene point is coming up. So let's click this drop down menu, but wait a minute, only one showing up. That's because all of these are named the same, same thing. So let's make them unique. So this one is, I'm gonna call it in front of red door. Okay, so now they're named something unique. So let's go ahead and go back to here and now when we click the drop down, oh, again, what's the problem? We didn't update our scene database. So let's update the scene database. And we can see the current um, 
So here, here's our current database. So this scene has now three entrance points. So that will now show up here. But again, if I come back here to the travel scene, there's no points set up because in my database, I have no entrance points. So this scene is ready to go, but we need to go to this other scene and set it up. So here I am in the other scene. Let's uh, add a scene exit. Okay, so now that we've set it up, uh, something else I need to point out here is the auto travel. Um, I can either say, I wanna automatically travel when I enter this, and when I enter this, everyone that's in this scene, I wanna send them all together. Um, and this setting, when you uh, come up here and just say scene manager, add scene uh, exit, this setting here is gonna be based on whatever you've set inside your sync scenes here. So if I tick this and I come up here to say scene exit, now you'll see that the send all together is ticked. So just be aware of that, that this setting, um, when it's enabled, will uh, enable this for all of your uh, scenes here. So um, this one, I wanna definitely auto travel. I want to go to this scene and I want to spawn either in front of the red door, top of the tower. So I'm going to say I want to go to the top of the tower. Okay, and then we need a way for uh, this scene to have an entrance point. So let's say entrance and we will call this uh, only entrance. And then we will update our scene database. And let's go back here. And let's look at this one. And now we'll see the travel to scene has the only entrance selected. And I want auto travel to be here as well. But before I do that, let's look at uh, a couple of other options that we have in here. So this button to travel, this is set up according to whatever you currently have set up in your project settings. So here in my input, we'll see that the return here is at the bottom of the list. And you'll see this matches up exactly to what your input settings are. So returns at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this and let's go back into here and you'll see return is no longer available. That's because it's been removed from my input list. So let's go ahead and add that back in here because this is important for the chat box. Okay, so that's been added in there and you will see that it's now available here again. So that's something that's helpful for you. Um, and then this activate on enter this is just um, basically you can have a list of game objects and it will loop through all those game objects and enable them when you enter this game object or enter this trigger and it will disable them when you leave the trigger. And then I've added a couple of Unity events that will be helpful for you. So when you are about to travel to the new scene, this is called right before you travel. And then these two are called every, anytime any player enters the trigger and then this is called only when you enter the trigger. And what I mean you is I mean the player that you are controlling and not other networked players. And then I've also added here this loading scene. So I, I wanted you to realize that this is only for traveling two scenes. This doesn't control anything with your UI. So I've added this additional component here to say, hey, I want to enable my UI for the loading screen right before I travel. So I could set a series of images that I want to select here, but I'm just going to give it a basic title saying uh, uh, going to travels, going to travel scene. And then I want to add a description saying uh, this is my description. And you can have multiple here and it will uh, basically fade in and fade out and go through these descriptions. Um, and this is going to happen so fast that you probably won't even have time to read the first description because this scene is so small. Uh, but for the sake of this, I'm going to keep that there. Okay, so now we have a way to travel to and from this Invector Melee Combat scene and this Travel To scene. And, you know, just for safekeeping, I'll update the database and we can uh, view our database here. So that database looks right. But remember, there's a couple of things that we're missing. So let's go ahead and perform scene tests. Let's clear this out and say perform. Hey, the network manager is missing the database. So let's go ahead and click and add that database. And then something else uh, to note here, 
Uh, this normally does it for you, but uh, I've noticed Unity has um, a bug with uh, how, it, how it saves uh, prefabs sometimes. So this room button, so if I click it, go into here, this room button has the scenes database selected. And uh, this scenes database is just a list of database scenes and that can be viewed here that lives in the resources folder and this structure is important the scenes database does need to be in the scenes database directory inside of the resources folder and this scene manager must stay as a root object and be called scene manager that's how it can loop through every single scene and find all of your scene entrance points so just be aware of that and then now let's get into you'll see there is a spawn point and then there's a scene entrance. You're like, well, wait a minute, why do we need both? So a, a scene entrance here, that's for when you're traveling to and from scenes, you're gonna be spawning at these defined points. And then a spawn point is a point where if you're joining from the lobby and this um, session allows you to join it, this is the point where you're going to be spawning at. And if you have multiple spawn points, it will just randomly pick one and spawn you there. Otherwise, it's going to spawn you at the uh, only selected point. So with all of that, let's just run a scene test. OK, it looks like we are OK. So now what we're going to do is we are going to build and run. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start up three versions of this game. So let's first find uh, where I saved it. Okay, so I have three instances of the game running. Let's uh, name these. Okay, let's have this guy host the name, uh, host the game, sorry. This guy will join the lobby. Here, player one room. There's currently one player. He is in the lobby. Okay. So there we go. We have two people in here, player one and player two, but player three has currently not joined yet. We see the number of players is two. The room name is called player one room without an underscore anything. So let's have player two uh, go to another room. So now we see player one, or excuse me, this player two screen is no longer in the lobby because it says underscore travel to scene. So that's a way to help you know that if you're in the lobby or not. But now things are interesting because what happens when I try to join this game? So let's click join game. What's, what's going to show up? So it says I'm in the lobby. So let's refresh. It says there's two players in here and in the lobby is true. But let's go ahead and click into this. Now we see, it says actually, hey, there's actually one person in the lobby area, but there's one person called um, in the scene called travel to scene. So I can choose which scene I want to join. So I'm going to say uh, travel to scene. And here we are. Uh, I am in the travel to scene with player two because that's the scene that I have joined. So let's have this guy uh, go into the scene with them. So here he is. He's in the scene with them, and they're all together. Um, and you can see uh, we can damage each other. And it's kind of hard to see his health, but look at his health bar as we travel to the scene. You'll see that um, stats travel with you. And uh, remember, we selected when we travel that uh, from that scene, we go to the top of the tower because that's uh, the location that we've uh, said that we want to go so we can have everybody go back in there and then oh I closed it down oop okay and then let's go back to this guy let's have him travel back and there we are everybody's in the scene and of course we can uh, still chat with each other see the notification icons will come up we can come into this and we can see that and then we can respond yep 
So everything is working. That makes uh, scene transitions very easy. It makes it so you can join uh, your desired room if it's open. Um, and then uh, something that's really interesting. So notice that everyone is in this room now. So let's uh, go ahead and start this one as the fourth player. Um, you realize everyone ha has now traveled between scenes and now everyone lives in the exact same scene. So what's going to happen here? So if I click join game and refresh this list, you'll see that three players are in there. And so if I click this, you'll see it immediately joins the room that everyone is in because there's no point in trying to select a room because everyone is in the same room. So that's something that is done for you and it recognizes that I am not the master client. Um, so if I travel here, I will become the master client because I'm the first one that's entered this room. Um, so that that's um, done all for you. So let, let's explain a little bit of what is happening behind the hood. So let's first close all these. Okay, so this is kind of what's happening behind the, behind the scenes. So when you first create a room, um, you create a room called Room A. And that essentially is your lobby. Um, but it's also important because Room A here is your uh, overall session name. So when I leave to go to a new scene, you're actually leaving a Photon um, session and creating a new session called um, basically your root name underscore what level you're on. And then the same thing when you when you're leaving sessions here, you're going to the same thing and vice versa. But you'll notice that you never actually ever come back to this lobby. Now you're always traveling between scenes like so. And uh, you never ever go back to the lobby. And because it's always using this root name, it's never going to overlap with if someone generates a new scene that goes to something else, another game session. Uh, so that's important to note in that when your lobby is made, your lobby is a one-time scene. When you leave it, you never come back to it. And uh, because it always uses the underscore naming scheme, it's important that when you uh, create a room, you don't allow underscores in the name because that will break things. Um, and this helps us to differentiate uh, between who is in what room. So when we do a room listing, we're actually listing every single one of these rooms. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. But we don't want to show that to everybody. So what it's only showing is these root session names. And then when you click on A, it will then display who is in, in what room. And then you can join that room like uh, you saw before. So if we had generated a new session name here, B, we would know uh, we would never actually ever connect to anyone in session A. So that's a way that we can help segregate uh, who is in what room and who's in what scene. So let's see that in action, um, some of this name checking here. And so here we can see that uh, the session name is illegal because that's using the underscore. Um, so let's uh, also try to host a game that has nothing. And you'll see, again, that's not allowed e either because that could also break something. So we have to have something that is valid in there. And so those checks are done for you. Mm -hmm.